So we were starting off with Pixel Bush's video about how he loves the Skull Merchant rework. This is such a perplexing statement that this is the main reason I even wanted to do React Andy Day today. But let's, uh, yeah, uh, let's get popcorn. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> let's just... Welcome, friends and foes, survivors and killers. Let's sit around the campfire together and talk about Dead by Daylight. Specifically, the 7.3.0 PTB and the Skull Merchant rework. Okay, so everyone's favourite lean, mean drone machine is back in the headlines, and the responses are exactly what we should come to expect at this point whenever Skull Merchant appears. Oh, you like captions? Okay. Here you go. Conversation. <sighs> Some things never change. But thankfully, Skull Merchant is not one of those things, because her rework is here. And having been playing it on PTB a fair bit, I feel comfortable giving my verdict on it. And I love it. <laughs> I'm not going to understate things here. This design, this reimagining of Skull Merchant's power, is pretty much everything I wanted her to be. I really, really like what we have here because almost everything I was worried about turned out to not be an issue at all. Behavior addressed pretty much everything I expressed concern about in my prior video about Skull Merchant's upcoming rework. And when I say almost <laughs> all, scarboxing.com rework, I do think there is one elephant in the room, and that's that she's not particularly, <laughs> you know, powerful. That's been the issue that She's everybody has shit. found with her, and if you ask anyone who's played with her on PTV what they think, that's pretty much the extent of the criticism that you'll find. She's not very strong. And another creator might just leave it at that. But as you might have noticed, I've got plenty of runtime left in this bad boy, so I'm going to be going a little bit deeper. While I will concede that she isn't very strong, I think there's two important points everybody's missing. First of all, while she is bad, I don't think she's quite as bad as people seem to be saying that she is. Disagree, she's worse. And second of all, a killer being weak on the PTB isn't necessarily a sign of a fail rework on its own. The way a lot of people who tried the Skull Merchant rework are talking, me. you think she's some D-tier garbage worst killer in the game type of deal. Mm -hmm. But as far as I can see, she's really not. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. She's bad in the same way that, like, Doctor or Legion are bad. Not in the same way that Trapper or Myers are bad. Is it weird? I think Myers is better than both Doctor and Legion. <laughs> I don't know why I, I, I view Myers so much more or so much higher than like a lot of content creators, but I don't know, man. I just think his ability to sneak up on someone who is they could be the best player in the game. If an eight meter tear radius, you pop tier three on them and they die. They, they can't do anything. I don't know. He's not, he's not a good killer, but he's definitely not in the trapper tier. She's the kind of killer that, in your average match, will be serviceable if played well against most survivors, but in her current state will come unstuck against people who really know what they're doing. But here's the fun part about New Skull Merchant. Yes, she's weak. But she's weak and buffable. And on the PTB, that's what matters. Her kit has a lot of moving parts. See, I think the issue, I, I never really care about the strength of the killer. I don't think the fun aspect of her kit is buffable. That's mostly what I'm focused on when I say I hate this rework so much. There's nothing engaging you can do as her or against her. I don't care if she's the best or worst killer. That is the most important part of the game, how fun she is. And I don't see how you can fix that part at all. I don't really care how strong she is. In that her buffs and QOL changes can go in a lot of places. And because she's now actually a pretty healthy design, these what? buffs won't risk making her a problem like a prior iteration. You out of your goddamn the mind. Have done right at least. I'll be covering what I would do to buff her later on in the video, but before we Bro, get- how is it healthy design? She puts up drone, you leave loop. If you don't leave loop, you get injured. If you do leave loop, you get injured, but no claw trap. Repeat until edge of map, and then you eventually go down. Like, oh god, it's such- It's just the standard use power, leave loop bullshit that we've had with, like, seven out of, like, ten recent killers. Isn't that the same with artists? Yeah, it's- At least artist has to aim something. Kind of like there's something artist has some little component that makes it slightly more interesting. It's basically just as bad as night, in my opinion, in terms of boring at a loop. Come to that. It's healthy because no three gen. Okay, if that's it's that's if that's what we're talking about, then sure. That's the thing. I would say it's healthier because I mean it's physically impossible to not be healthier. You couldn't do any worse than that. It's impossible. So just because it's healthier doesn't mean it's healthy. Yeah, that bar is so low that it's underground. Like, that's, that's nothing. It's probably a good idea to go over what the new Scott Merchant actually does. If you've not the new Scott Merchant? 
Skull Merchant now has six drones, and each one has three different modes. Stealth mode, scouting mode, and disabled. I'm disabled. When she places a drone, it spawns in stealth mode, and will enter scouting mode when it spots a survivor. Stealth mode drones spin around slowly in the air, trying to detect survivors. And while they do this by emitting those two beams that spin with them, players can't see those beams. Survivors have to intuit where the beams are and what the drone can see from the position just of the little light. <laughs> when a survivor moves through a beam and gets spotted, the drone enters scouting mode, where the beams become visible but move a lot faster. The one major caveat here is that the drones cannot see stationary survivors, meaning they do very little when left by generators. This effectively kills her three genning by itself. You can just crouch through it, yeah. In addition, survivors can try to disable a drone, which will give them a lock-on stack if they fail the hacking minigame or become disabled for 45 seconds before trying to stealth mode if they succeed. Survivors spotted by a stealth or scouting drone get a stack of lock-on, which they cannot lose once they have it, kind of like Ghostface's mark progression. At three stacks, the drone that marked them will fire a claw trap at that survivor, injuring them if they are healthy or deep wounding them if they are injured. Claw traps fall off after 45 seconds, but their effects are a little different this time. While they still provide the haste and radar tracking they do on live, they replace the pallet break with the. Did you guys notice the radar doing anything on the PTB whatsoever? I feel like every time I check my radar the entire game, there was never any dots on it. <laughs> like it just offered zero information the entire time. I feel like it has no effective tracking anymore. And typically, the only time someone will have one uh, a stack on them or a, a claw trap on them is when you're already chasing them so you know where they are to begin with like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything broken status effect for as long as they're attached and if a survivor who's already claw trap runs into a drone they get their killer instant revealed and six seconds of a 10 percent hinder she's also got a shit ton of brand new add-ons and with that holy shit they yeah, did pebble. a lot to change her but we're finally through it all and if you think my run through of the power hasn't helped you at all then understanding what it does or how to use it then just wait till you play with it because this power is pretty confusing at first glance when it got revealed earlier in the week the written description was met with a universal community response of eh? i don't think that's really gone away since the ptb so let me give you the cliff notes of what the power kind of wants you to do okay, in my opinion anyway skull merchant 2.0 is more like a trap killer than anything else nowadays well, I see, I've, I've seen a lot of people on Reddit and the forums and Twitter and all that said, a lot of people have made this argument that she's like a trap based killer now, where you set it kind of like in between loops where you know they're going to have to path through in order to, you know, proceed further. I've seen a lot of people say that. And that play style is so bad. I just realized that the names in this lobby are Kim Wexler and Jimmy McGill. <laughs> when we just had Walter. Okay. Um, but. If you do the whole trap play style, it's like the shittiest trapper ever in history. Because you, they, you can have one in a path, they just run through it. The worst thing that happens is they get a stack of lock on. Okay. And now you've d one of your traps has gained one stack of lock on to the survivor. Whereas trapper would just down the survivor, hack and teleport and hit the survivor. Every other trapper does something more than just you've done one third of something useful at that point like it's just it's so shit if that's the actual play style that's supposed to happen makes no sense than placing a drone by a generator and sniffing it harder than charlie sheen going through customs you want to place it ahead of time at a choke point or an entrance to a tile that a survivor is going to run through when you're chasing them anybody who's familiar with how to play hag will know what i mean here you don't tend to put hags traps up touching a generator right but hag gets a hit skull merchant doesn't that's the huge difference uh to say but you want to put them up in a way that survivors run into them unawares. You should treat Skull Merchant's drones the same way. This means if you take chase of somebody who's healthy but has two lock-on stacks... They're basically hag traps that you can see floating in the air. That's like the best way to look at it. And also, if the killer runs under those traps as they're chasing the survivor being pathed into it, the trap disables. Like it flies up in the air again. So it's, it's so much worse. Well, you get something like this. Okay. That's the sound of every night player in existence coming to the point of orgasm at the same no. time. No, 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 no. Okay. Two lock on. Do you know why this worked? Well, you get something like this. How how long was this Nia getting lock on stacks beforehand? 
This is like the end result of 25 minutes of setup and running in traps and getting multiple lock-on stacks. And then finally getting to the point where they run into another one and then they finally get the, the damage hit. Whereas someone like Knight can just do that by default. Now granted, if they have somewhere to run, they're not going to get hit by the guard too. But that's if they're in the corner, then we have that kind of scenario. What was not shown before this was the amount of time it took for her to get max lock-on stacks. Which is yeah. very significant. That's the sound of every night player in existence coming to the point of orgasm at the same time, because they wish they could two-tap this fucking cleanly. Setting a drone up as you go in chase can be useful, but the mileage of that really depends on the tile in question. At a low tile, they'll get marked very quickly, and they're basically not, forced to leave instantly if they're healthy, but there's some actual play to it, especially at taller tiles if you know where the drone is and can play around its slow spinning speed before it's activated into scouting mode. If they see you set it up, they will avoid lock-on like the plague, but if you can place it in a tile and they run into it unawares, there's a good chance they won't have a choice in the matter and will just get a stack before they can react. Isn't that shit design? There's a good choice, or there's a good chance they'll have no choice in the matter. I don't know how he can say those words and re not realize that's a huge problem. The survivor can have no choice in, in a scenario. Isn't that just horrible, horrible game design? Like, that makes... That's so bad. You should never have zero choices in a scenario. Similar to Legion or Plague, the power is great at getting the first health state, but struggles at getting the second one. And this would be where she comes unstuck. What if survivors just don't heal? Well, if nothing else, you're a stealth killer. You get undetectable when you put a drone up, so you can capitalize on survivors just staying injured. How are you a stealth killer if you placed your drones as traps already? You're not replacing drones because you placed them as traps. Mixed messages. Are you playing them as a chase killer or a trap killer? You can't do both. Either you have them as traps and you don't get to use it on-demand stealth or use it in chase, and then you get to use on-demand stealth and you don't have this web setup of traps. So you can't have both of them. I guess maybe you could save one trap for one stealth in one chase or something. By getting cheap and easy hits. Hey, Jonathan. And you're not even totally powerless if a survivor is injured because claw trapping them gives them that meaningful hindered penalty. It's nothing crazy, but that's more options against injured survivors than the no options at all that, like, Legion's got. <laughs> I know I'm making this power sound actually quite effective, and if it worked consistently like I described, it probably would be, but unfortunately that isn't the reality we live in right now. Her stealth drone spins so slowly that when a survivor enters a tile with one, there's a good chance it'll take way too long yes. to pick them up because turning into the correct position to catch them is glacially slow. Thank you. This, I think, is by far the biggest thing holding her back as a trap killer. If her traps just don't work half the time because they're facing the wrong way, what's the damn point of running a survivor into it? This kind of goes for scouting drones too, but in a different way. Since survivors know where a scouting drone is, their first priority is shift W in a straight line as far past it as they can. Mm -hmm. Which is fair enough, but right now on PTB, you can run right across the radius without them being catching up to you pretty consistently. Yep. This needs to change. And you could do this by speeding the beam up, but I think the better way of doing this would be to increase the beam radius specifically for scouting mode. So it might clip survivors who are trying to shift W away and force survivors to path wider a loop if they want to avoid getting locked on. The only other issue I'm noticing... Yeah, that's one of the main issues, too, is that the radius is so small, you can just run directly through a perfectly set drone and not get a stack of lock on. Because unless it's a literally rotten field where it's a wide open field and there's not a single thing in the way, there's usually some minute obstruction for enough time for it to just not give you a stack, so it's completely pointless. So here's the thing. If they made it faster, if they made it rotate faster, it would still have the issue of line of sight obstructing it. It would still have the issue of it getting reset when you run under it. And it would still have the issue of even if it was super effective of still being shitty game design because then you're just doing basically the night again in just a different form. So it's still bad no matter what. Here that puts a status as a trap killer into question is her drone count. They buffed it from 4 to 6, but given you meant to pop these things in tiles ahead of time, I don't think she has enough. Especially since a lot of the time you'd be wanting to chain drones back to back to get those lock-on stacks. 7 or even 8 drones would be better here, I think. 6 just feels way too limiting on any map with decent size. See, this is such a, it's such a problem because, like, if you give her more drones, then you can essentially just trap every main loop, which means every time anyone goes to any main loop, they're going to eventually just get damaged.
Like that, there's just no way you can make this engaging or good design. There's no saving that. Yes, it will make her stronger, but now the, the survivor gameplay is just run around the outskirts of maps or something. Like the, there's no... <laughs> Imagine if you had like 15 trapper traps and you can put a trap that auto reset at every single loop or something like that. What the fuck would you do even do? You just run in the corners and just do nothing. There's no gameplay anymore. <laughs> There's no saving it, man. Especially since they don't go through floors anymore. So here's my official feedback for the Skull Merchant's PTB rework. She needs some buffs to her consistency as a trap placement killer. And to do this, I would advise the following. Increasing the spin speed of a stealth mode drone I'd be okay with that. as or near to the spin speed of a scouting drone, buff the detection range of a scouting drone's beams, and up her drone count from 6 to 7 or 8. There are other changes that could be made too. I, I don't think that can work. That would make her strong, but then yeah. So now we have more drones, they spin faster, and they're bigger AoEs. Which means, yeah, you just basically spend a minute dropping them in every loop in the entire map, and now survivors... I, I don't know. I guess they have to run around, like, disabling them, but then you can just reset them again. I, I, I don't know. It just still seems like that would just be such terrible design. It would be so boring to go against. Yeah, of course, you, you have to take into account the survivors can hack the drones, yeah. But, I mean, they're still able to be reset, and that still doesn't necessarily result in anything engaging. Having to run to an area and then turn off the trap, or... Just at least disable it temporarily. It's still not very exciting in any way. I, I don't know. I guess there's some interaction there. And I guess that's probably where he's coming from. That the, the interaction is that survivors have to go around disabling them preemptively. Assuming that they're going to get chased into these loops maybe. I, I don't know man. Uh, Shiny thank you for the 21. I will. Like buffing her power cooldown, increasing the spin speed of scouting drones as well, and some ion changes will also be welcome. But these are the important three that I think are necessary for the Skull Merchant to be good at what her kit encourages her to do. I suppose I could wrap the video up here, keep it short and sweet, but before I do, there's something important I want to get across. I do agree with that, Sire. I, I think there's no way to make trap-based killers fun for Survivor. At least if the killer's fun to play, it's whatever, it's fine. Pe survivors will hate it, but, you know, there is the killer side of the game too. And killers should be able to have fun as well. But I do think there is no way to make trap-based killers engaging to go against at all. Uh, Trapper. It's, I'm um, running around a loop. There's an invisible trap in some grass I could never possibly see. I ran it. The chase is over. Okay, cool. Or there's no trap, and now the trapper has just nothing to do, and he's useless. And that sucks for the trapper. It's like very binary gameplay. Either the trap is triggered, and the survivor is fucked, or the trap is not triggered, and the killer is useless. Like, there's just... I don't think you can make trappers engaging. I don't think there's, like, a, a real way to do it. Honestly, I find Hag to be more exciting than Trapper, because at least with Hag, you get hit. The, the chase is not just immediately over, you know? I, I know that's weird saying I find Hag more exciting than Trapper, but actually I do. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I, I still think there's no real way to do it. Ross. I don't believe that Skull Merchant being a weak killer is indicative of a bad rework or a bad PTB. It's very far from that. Yes, she's weak, we've covered that. For the most part, I've avoided saying the word bad because this is not a bad rework by any stretch of imagination. In every way other than her power level, the Skull Merchant rework is an absolute success. The new power is a thematic home run. Since a major part of Adriana's method of killing was to use the drones to corral and monitor her chosen victims to set the stage for a perfect hunt. The drones do that now far better than they ever did. And the fact that you're not punished by a claw trap for disabling them makes taking out a drone as a survivor feel way better and more impactful, even though they do come back. Yeah, I think basing gameplay off of lore is a terrible idea. You should never do that. I'm a big fan of the game of well, Grandma's Footsteps that you play when you're going to take work, a drone down. It could work, not in this case. Grandma's Footsteps, by the way, is what we call red light, green light in a country where we know what things are meant to be called. The closest thing to problematic in her kit is the zoning a deployed drone can present in chase, but at the end of the day, it's one health state at most, it's got a lot of mitigating factors, and is pretty small potatoes compared to shit like Knight, Artist, or Xenomorph. She's a trap killer who's both encouraged Ow. to take chases to herd survivors into her control zones, and who has a versatile enough kit to not feel turbo-restricted like Hag or Trapper can do. You've got stealth, you've got zoning, you've got hindered and haste. You've kind of got everything going on at once, and it's really pretty sick when it all comes together just right. Let me be real here, Skull Merchant was never going to be a mechanically intensive killer. 
And if you're somebody who enjoys killers with solely mechanical skill expression in the vein of Blight, Wesker, or Xenomorph, then I understand why this rework could be underwhelming for you. But you've got to understand here. No matter what they did to Skull Merch. See, I, I, w w what he's getting at. Uh, confident. Thank you for the 200, uh, 200 bits, man. Waska. <laughs> uh, I, I get what he's saying. It. Not every killer has to be. I, I, I get a lot of shit for this. Like Scott wants every killer to be Wesker. Scott wants every killer to have some type of mechanical skill component. So there's some, you know, semblance of having to learn something and some semblance of outplaying them and playing well as them. So there's interaction between both sides. But there's a reason I say that. Because if you have a scenario where killers are given essentially free hits like Knight or, you know, Skull Merchant if the area is zoned out, if they're given free hits while doing nothing, while do exemplifying zero skill in any way, I just think that is something that is harmful to the health of the game. That's not something that should ever happen. Old Legion, that's the reason Old Legion was the worst thing that's ever happened to this game. It's because there was no skill component to it. No matter what, you were going to go down to Legion in a finite amount of time. So there was no point in even playing the game. The point of playing a game is sh exemplifying your skill and showing what you've learned to win over your opponents. With killers like Old Legion, for example, and Knight and Skull Merchant, stuff like that, there's none of that. It doesn't matter if the killer has three seconds in the game or 50 billion hours. The same gameplay is happening every time. And there's only one correct counterplay to make every single time. Like, that's, that's I think, the main issue. It's not like... It's it's lack of options in, in a chase. That is the worst thing that they can do. If survivors don't have any options in a chase that are successful, then they're just playing a cutscene until they get hit. And then you have killers saying, but killers are the big, bad, scary killers. They're supposed to you know, be more powerful than the survivors, and they're supposed to down the survivors, which is true. That is the lore. They are scary killers, but you have to realize it's two people playing a video game. If someone is guaranteed a result with zero effort, that is bad. For the same example, on the other side, um, the game map for Survivor is basically the equivalent of what I'm talking about. There's no skill component to anything happening on that map. You run to the safe pallet and drop it. You run to the safe pallet and drop it. You run to the safe pallet and drop it, and the game's over, and I've either you're all dead, and there's no pallets, or you've all escaped. That's like the survivor equivalent. It's hard to give an equivalent because survivors don't have power, so I need to bring a map into it. But that's basically the equivalent, or the equivalent, where there's just no choice. The killer can't do anything. It's just a safe pallet. He has to run up and kick it. And the survivor doesn't have a choice. They have to run up and just drop it. It's just very binary gameplay. It's a flow chart. You do the same thing in every loop. It's just boring. That's, I think, the worst part. Not everyone finds the fun of a game and the challenge of besting someone. No, I, I understand that, but for a game to be successful, you need to have that, in my opinion. Unless it's like, you know, a game you're just dicking around with your friends or something like that. If you're playing Mario Party at your dude's, in your dude's like basement or something, that's totally different. But as soon as you introduce strangers to the mix, there's going to be that desire to beat them, even if you don't care. Like, you've seen me play. I am very not give a shit about winning in DBD anymore. I haven't been like that in a long time. I'm very, very lax. I still prefer to win. I will still try to win, but... Not a detriment to myself where I think, you know, I'm just going to tunnel everyone and be a sweaty bitch because I don't find that fun. There is a line there for sure, but yeah, no, no one's going to want to just start losing all the time. It doesn't matter if someone's just, you know, there for a heckin' wholesome arena game time just to have fun with their friends. If you're just getting your ass beat every game, I don't care how wholesome you are, you're going to stop liking that. You have to have a scenario where you can feel like you've improved and you're showing your skill at the game. That is required for games to continue to go on. And the more times they do stuff like this, I think it hurts the game. Just short of just deleting her completely and replacing her with something else, you are probably never going to like her, and that's entirely okay. Skull Merchant just isn't for you. And as long as she's not a parasite on the game like her old power was, as long as she's not underplayed because she sucks or feels bad. She will be underplayed massively if this is how she ships, by the way. There's nothing wrong with a killer with niche appeal. Being an area con See, that's the- here's the thing. I agree with that statement. There's nothing wrong with niche appeal. You know who is a killer that is well-designed with niche appeal? Singularity. Singularity is not played very much. He's very niche- and people don't like having to swap the cameras and then, you know, tag them with the camera, then teleport to them. There's a lot of but shit going on everything. there. Singularity is absolutely a niche killer. But 
there's interesting things happening there. There's gameplay on both sides. There's chase components. The killer has to obey the mechanics of the chase, but he can overpower them very quickly. He's got surveillance. There's a lot of cool stuff that the killer does that's interesting. And so that niche mechanic is okay. If the niche mechanic is I right click and now my guard auto hits you, I don't care how heckin' niche and wholesome or whatever that is. That's stupid design. It shouldn't be a part of the game. It has to be for you. Not every new killer has to be a Wesker or a Xenomorph with a super broad appeal to the same demographics over and over again. Sure, I I've agree. I've not had a killer I've clicked with this much since the artist two years ago. I've not really cared at all about any killer releases in the past two years and finally, at long fucking last, I'm getting something that I really like. I've had to put up with so many new killers that are just boring me to tears and I finally got a new toy to play with. She's unique, she's flavorful, she's got massive build diversity, a trap- I just- I, I don't get how you can see her- I don't- I just don't get how she can be seen as fun. Even playing as the killer. At least if a trap-based killer is interesting to play as, I think that is fine. I think that's okay. It's kind of shit, but, you know. I don't complain about Artis that much, for example, because she's at least very fun to play as, right? But playing against her is miserable, but at least someone's happy in that scenario. With killers like Skull Merchant and, I don't know, Knight and Old Legion, stuff like that, it's just, it seems like nobody is happy. It's just, it's boring for everybody involved. Now, if he finds this fun, that's wonderful, and I'm jealous that he has something new to tinker with and have a good time. But I don't understand how you can find any of this fun. Even if it's, you play in the trap play style, which doesn't even work. You just dropping it. You're just right clicking a button, and then you just play the game. I, there's nothing there. It's 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 so like basic to me. And I I understand it doesn't have to be very complicated to be fun, but God, I just I don't I don't get it. Is it a good design to have a character that most of the community doesn't like? If uh, is it a good design? Should behavior make killers that only appeal to a small player base or a large player base? How do you determine that? Well, obviously it should be, it should be fun for as many people as possible. Um, but if it ends up being a niche-based killer, it's okay if it's something like Singularity, who at least has interesting stuff going on that is not inherently super miserable to go against. And I don't know. There's still the core mechanics of DBD, like they still matter, I guess. The original thanks to the 31. It's not even fun to theorycraft builds with Skull Merchant. Yeah, what do you, what do you even do? Like... Even, like, the Chase Merchant build from before was just stacking add-ons that worked where they were in your, your drone zone. But then they just leave the loop anyway. So, it's just, I don't know. Wesker, Blight, Inertia, Simple Kill, is that a boring to play against, too? See, I disagree with that heavily. I would say a, a good Nurse is boring to go against, because, yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can really do. Um, but a good Wesker or Blight, as long as they're not, you know, rocking insanely busted add-ons, I think those are super fun to go against. You need to know how many charges they have left on their power. Uh, if they're going to be able to make the corner, if you're going to be able to get to the window or not, should you fake the window if it's a Wesker to make them vault it? Like, there's there's so many interesting things that happen individually in a chase with Blight and Wesker that, I don't know, I, I find them really interesting. Now, again, if with Blight, if you start bringing Compound 33 and busted shit, then yeah, of course that's dumb. But um, in terms of, like, regular Blight and Wesker, I, I think there's so much more interesting stuff that happens in a chase there that I, I don't know. You, you can, of course, disagree, and that's fine. I just think that's way more interesting than Knight drops guard, you get hit. XD, very fun. I have no nose, and I'm a sneeze based. Thank you for the three months, man. Setting skill expression in a way that no other killer's got. She's pretty healthy. Wait, 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 wait. In a way that no unique, she's flavorful, she's got massive build diversity. A trap setting skill expression in a way that no other killer's got. Skull Merchant has skill expression in a way that no other killer's got. He's got to be trolling at this point, dude. You just right-click the button. <laughs> the skill expression is you, you, hit, you hit the right button on your mouse in an area where people will go. <laughs> She's pretty healthy as new releases go. The only issue she has at this point that isn't just a matter of personal taste is her power level. 
and power level is the easiest thing to adjust between PTB and live release anyway. That is true. And I can already see the vision of the comments saying I'm biased because I like Skull Merchant as a character. I've grown fond of her and that fondness has clouded my objectivity. And for what- That's another thing we have to talk about. Why? <laughs> Just why? But it's worth, you're probably right. I have a pre-existing positive opinion of the character and anything that realizes that character in a way that isn't a tumor on the game I'm going to view in a positive light. I'm not going to argue with that because it's true, but I want to ask you a question. Do you really think the Dead by Daylight community and the solid 95% of community figures who literally made it their business to hate every facet of Skull Merchant's existence for the past six months are any less influenced by their existing biases than I am? You can't very well say that my strong emotional reaction to this character Wait, was Scrump on there? Me from talking about Hold on. I can't very Every facet of Skull Base Scrump? Massive? existence for the past six months are any less influenced by their existing biases than I am. You can't very well say that my strong emotional reaction to this character disqualifies me from talking about her, sure. when that metric would disqualify every single creator and community voice in this game. Sure. <sighs> Sorry about how angry that got, just had to get that off my chest. In conclusion, I agree with that. I, I, I agree with where he's coming from there. The problem is you're supporting something that is near universally seen as miserable. And no matter how biased or not biased you are against it, it doesn't change the fact that basically everybody hates the thing that you stand for. <laughs> I don't know. Conclusion, the Skull Merchant is not perfect but it was a successful rework by almost every metric. Her ability to hold three gems almost indefinitely is dead as a doornail. Her skill expression and playstyle flexibility has gone up substantially. Her power is healthier and more thematic than it's ever been. And we finally got a new trap. I, I, <laughs> I like how he said it's, it's more thematic than it's ever been, but it corrected to automatic. And I just think that is chef's kiss. Because yes, it is automatic. <laughs> Killer to boot. I'm really impressed that Behavior managed to get this out so quickly after Skull Merchant's release. Just give her those buffs, man. Please, just a bit of a buff. You can do it. One little Loafelfian buff. And all it took was a PTD which fucked up every Macmillan map with insane chain tiles and somehow made Borgo even better for Survivor. <sighs> Professional opinion havers work is never done. But I guess until next time, I'll see you around. Ta-ta for now. <sighs> Pixel, you're on crack.